Hi, we are going to be exploring the paid version of Discovery Educational Experience. My name is Dr. Tanya Sanders, and all of my research is on K through 12 engagement. I did um, a qualitative research project on how can we engage students. So a lot of times educational resources such as the discovery um, educational experience will come up. Um, so I'm gonna walk through uh, several of the components of discovery educational experience. Again, the paid version. The first thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is going to be the basic information. So there are gonna be four total videos that go along with this. Um, and then after you are finished watching those four videos, there will be an assessment piece, a link that you'll click on to be able to prove your knowledge of this program. Um, a very short assessment, but you need to receive an 80% or higher on the assessment to uh, receive a certificate. So like I said, we're gonna be doing basic information in this video, logging in, um, that kind of information. The second video is gonna be about how to browse for resources and what happens when you browse for standards. And I've played with a lot of this stuff and chatted with um, Discovery and uh, tried to look at it from your perspective to see what would be annoying to you and, and that kind of stuff. So I have some personal opinions of what you're gonna see in that area. Um, and then there's a quiz studio and assessment builder. And those are really neat components. And in fact, I think they're probably the most valuable of the paid version of discovery education experience. And then the last thing that we're gonna look at are the My Classrooms, My Students and My Content. And um, the reason we're leaving that for the end, a lot of times I like to introduce the My Classrooms and My Students at the beginning, but the reason I'm introducing at the end is because everything else that we are uh, tackling is uh, contingent upon you being able to see that later with students. So if I showed you students first, you wouldn't see any of that stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to build all that stuff, how to um, add all of that stuff. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you the classes, the content that um, we achieved through doing that. All right, so the interface and basics. What is Discovery Education Experience? I've known Discovery uh, has been around forever and they, they have wonderful resources, they have wonderful content. I've always known them for um, here this thing is and it's, it's really neat. They're really kind of cool uh, resources and content and you're gonna see as we go through this course how awesome they really are. Um, but basically this is a quote from their webpage, um, timely, relevant content. That was part of my research that the thing that engaged students uh, was how relevant it was to them, how relevant it was to the curriculum, how relevant and connected it was to the teachers. Uh, but it's a useful teaching tool, agreed, um, all in one little area. And I agree with that quote. I do have some opinions in regards to some of the navigation and the technical aspects of it. Um, but hopefully my um, agitation with those minor details will help you be able to navigate it better. Um, so yes, and it does have a learning platform. You can teach, you can create, um, and then you can share that with your students or assign it to your students. And I give you a link here, the um, www.discoveryeducation.com slash features, and you can go there and see the um, all of the content area uh, categories that I'm talking about. So when I escape my presentation here, I'm gonna show you how to log in. I'm gonna show you how to access your account information. I'm going to explain the Waffle and My DE, which is Discovery Education. I'm gonna show you where you can go get educator support and then possibly be able to change that home layout to fit your specific needs. Okay, so now here we are in um, discoveryeducation.com. Um, I've navigated to this page. A lot of times what I'll do is I will Google discovery education um, experience so that I'm making sure I'm getting to the right page because it is a paid product. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the login issues I had the first time. 
Um, naturally, you're supposed to do sign in with Google. And that's probably what your district is going to have you do, sign in with Google. Uh, but I was a special case in a district since I'm not a part of that district and I'm just helping them teach this program. They said I had to log in a different way. So I have a username and I have a password. So I'm gonna just sign in and I had my computer remember that. And it's gonna take me directly to that district's uh, paid version of Discovery Education Experience. Okay, so if you want to uh, see more with your profile, you go over to the icon in the upper right hand corner and you click on your name. When I click on the name, it shows all my activity history and um, how I personalized it. The first time that you log in, it'll ask you some questions. What's your content area? What's your subject area? What are your interests? And basically, I just select a lot of stuff because I am teaching teachers and I'm not specifically in a um, content area. Over here on the left, you can see that it acknowledges that I'm an instructional coach for this district and it lists the district and um, how they recognize me. Now I can edit this information and change it if I want. I'm not going to, that's how they set me up in this account. Um, and then I can also go to account settings, which is very minimal what I can do. This might be different based on uh, difference in other school districts. So change school, confirm passwords, change password. But basically all you have to do is go over to the icon in the upper right hand corner, click on it, and then select your name. And it allows you to see some of the things that you've done with activity. Maybe there's something that you did in the past two, three days that you're like, oh, what was that? I forgot to add it to my content. I forgot to uh, keep it as a quick link. Uh, maybe then you can find it in your activity history and then nothing will be lost. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is how to navigate. And the navigation is what I think is kind of tricky um, or not tricky, clumsy, I guess. So anytime you wanna go somewhere, you can either click on this waffle over here and you can select where you want to go, or you can click on the upper left-hand corner on the D in the, in the globe. And it'll take you to the same thing. So here's the view of the waffle where you can see the My Classes, My Content quiz. And here is kind of like the dashboard of what you see. If I want to edit that home layout, I can click on, let me go to that again, right up here, edit home layout, click on that. And you can drag and reorder and organize the rows of your home page and how you want it to look. I have no need for that, so I'm not gonna edit it, but I just like to be able to show you that. When looking at the dashboard here, you can kind of see the color coding. This is how I'm going to be teaching things. This is the last thing for this video that I'm going to be talking about, which is educator support. Here are my browse options, which is the next video, the assessment studio and quiz, which is the third video. And then my final video is going to be showing you, going to be showing you how that looks um, to my students in my classroom, in my content, and for my district. So when I click on educator support, it's always nice to have that. Um, ability to, to find some things quickly if you don't have a tech coach uh, in your district. Uh, you can go here and they, they talk about each of these things. So like the getting started, you can see that's there. Timely resources, that's the next thing. The next uh, tab is hot topics. And if you scroll down, it talks about hot topics and what they are. Um, instructional strategies, professional learning and instructional leaders. Um, so instantly I went to instructional leaders just to see what was available there. And if I go back to the home and look at how it describes instructional leaders all the way down to the bottom of the page, it's uh, like packs of resources that will help lead teachers who are doing professional development for their in-house teachers to learn things or to give to them. Okay. 
So I want to hit the view. It's going to take me to the same place. And um, you just can see some of these resources when you get a chance, just kind of browse through them. If ever you have an issue, you can um, search up here for specific things that you're looking for. Um, I went to the uh, Google Classroom options and looked at those a little bit. Um, here's one supporting special education students. And you can click on each of these. This is a slideshow. Click on each of these and uh, view that uh, resource. Now, the thing is, this is a studio slideshow, and that's something that we're going to be talking about in the third video. So to get back, this is the part where I have problems with navigation. I'd love to have some breadcrumbs somewhere that I could go backwards, 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 because I'm just exploring things. I don't need to assign it. I don't need to copy it. Um, here's an immersive reader to read it to the students or read it to you if, if you were assigning that to the students. That's kind of a thing that I didn't plan on talking about in this video. Um, and I can print the preview of this. Um, but to navigate backwards, I either click on the D, and I've always been taught that you don't hit the back button, but if you hit the back button, it'll take you directly to the last thing you were to, and I know you know that. Um, but if I hit the D, it'll take me all the way back to my home dashboard. Now I'm gonna hit educator supports again and just show you that if I go to hot topics or timely resources, I like timely resources, the getting started, hopefully you won't need that after you've seen uh, this video. Um, but if I scroll down, I can see that resources that are necessary for this month of October, activity calendars, um, get by grade level, um, snacking in Stone Town. These are just things that uh, seem very pertinent to this time, very relevant to October or whatever that month is. And that's the thing that Discovery Education is kind of known for, whatever that holiday is, it represents those, uh, that month, that day, that holiday in resources, in content. So that's the basic information about logging in and navigation and um, looking at some of the educator support resources for you. The next video, I will be talking about how to browse standards and how to browse in general.